We can anticipate a, a wonderful treat tonight. And so I present you the beautiful Miss Subashri Shuku, the new Miss Subashri Shuku. Master, as most of you know, I was recently married. My mother hadn't met my husband, so when we got engaged, I picked up the phone, I called her, and I said, I finally found the guy I want to spend the rest of my life with. Her first words were, send me his time, date, and place of birth. Now, if you're an Indian, you'd know immediately why she demanded this information. She wanted to compare our natal charts to see if we were compatible. This is the faith people have in astrology. She hadn't met, seen, or spoken to her future son-in-law, but she believed that charts could determine if her daughter was to have a happy married life. Indian astrology, or Jyotisha, is supposed to be one of the oldest astrologies in the world dating back to 3000 BC. What it does is it uses the position of the stars, the planets and the sun as seen in the sky during the time of a person's birth. So how does the position of a bunch of celestial bodies determine one's life course? Now I'm not even going to get into the crux of Hinduism which is karma, I'm going to try and give you a clinical and scientific explanation. Earth is a magnet, right? Now the celestial bodies have a magnetic field about them which has a direct physical influence on Earth. Now this influence applies to us as well because we too are in a way magnets. Now it's not just the position of the planets. Stones and crystals, too, are said to have some kind of an influence on one's life. The science being that um, human beings and other living organisms have a special characteristic of possessing energy. So, when this energy is aligned with the electric conductivity of crystals and stones, it produces a force. Within our body, the energy moves, there are certain points where the energy interchanges or moves around in circuits. These points are called as chakras. Now the belief is that if you place these crystals or stones on these chakras in your body, it has the power to heal or better certain organs in your body. So is astrology an art or a science? Astrologers actually believe that it's both ways. They feel that it is an art because you need to have the feel for the metaphysical. At the same time, the whole practice of astrology seems to have this, it seems to be very scientific. For instance, when people are creating the, the natal charts, the astrologer has to determine the person's exact time of birth. He then converts that into the Greenwich Mean Time and he then translates that into the side, ru side rule time and then he translates that back to the local side rule time. Now when all this is finished, he has to make some intrinsic calculations about the various zodiacal and planetary positions at that exact time. However, the problem is that astrology is not supported by scientific and research like statistical studies. It's not based on collected data or it, is not, uh, it does not have collective, carefully collected objective observation. <coughs> so what happens? Despite that, there are millions of people today that believe in astrology. 
Astrology has been practiced for thousands and thousands of years. The Romans, the Greeks, the Persians, the Arabs, the Chinese, just to name a few. Now, my point today is not to discuss about Indian astrology. And I'm not here to talk about Chinese horoscopes or the predictions of Nostradamus. <coughs> what I wanted to bring to your attention today was the fascination that people have, have always had with knowing and understanding the unknown. Can you tell me, apart uh, from the headlines, which paper, uh, which page <coughs> the newspaper is the most read? It happens to be daily horoscopes and weather forecasts. You see, we don't even want to leave the house without knowing what somebody else has said about our day. When I was in radio, <coughs> we got the highest listenership on January 1st, 2007. It was a morning show at 7 a.m. Do you know what segment we were running? Predictions for 2007. When we had local riots, the common occurrence is we have a lot of people spreading rumors about unreal news or news to be. Now we put a psychologist on air and asked him what is this fascination with, with news that needs to be. And he said people want to know, want, want to know, want to be the first to know. This gives them a certain, this puts them in a power pedestal so they can now enlighten others and who are ignorant about that topic. Now, <clears throat> in these uncertain times, there are two industries that have flourished. One is healthcare and the other is astrology. It's not just about, you know, personal forefront. Mergers are predicted. Economic crisis, job markets are predicted, even product sales are predicted. I read somewhere that Twitter results are being used to uh, determine the success of films that are not being released. So, my point is, is it healthy, this preoccupation with wanting to know the unknown? Does the heuristic, astrological, scientific prediction actually help us better prepare for tomorrow? The honest truth is, I don't know. But I believe I have something here with me that carries an answer to this. This is a book by Paulo Coelho called Brita, and this happens to be the inspiration for my speech today. It says here, only the present has power over our lives. When you read your future in your cards, you are bringing the future into the present, and that can cause serious harm. The present could confuse your future. So live your day one day at a time, because today is your future. And it took